Fish, especially white fish, is one of the easiest things you can possibly cook. And versatile too. I mean, throughout my career, I must have easily come up with a thousand different ways, and I mean a thousand different ways, to put fish on a menu and charge a lot of money for it. But when I get home, in my own kitchen, I always seem to cook it the same way. Back to old school, back to just simply dusting it with flour and pan frying. You know, cooking fish is super easy. It's actually very, very simple to cook fish. It always seems like actually the toughest part about cooking fish is getting the fish, getting good fresh fish. And that can be very easy too. Really, it's all about forging a relationship with your fishmonger, getting to know them so you can trust them and trust your nose too. Can I have a sniff of that? Certainly. I, I know it's good, but I gotta double check. You know, that's really the single most reliable indicator of whether fish is fresh or not. Have a good look at it. It should have a nice glistening look to it. And really, it shouldn't smell like anything. If there's any hint of any smell, then it's starting to go bad. This smells awesome. I'll take two. Carmen, I should ask you, now, how would you cook this if you took this home? I prefer it baked with a sprinkle of smoked salmon on top with uh, grated cheddar cheese. So, that sounds really good. So you'd, you'd make a crust out of smoked salmon and cheddar cheese and just bake it and let it, let it rip. Yep. That sounds really good. Thanks for the advice. Thank you. Right on. Take care. We'll Have see you next day. week. Okay. That's one of the things I love about Carmen, our local fishmonger. He actually cares about what happens to the fish. He's always got a good idea for what you can do with it. Now, I'm not planning on doing a smoked salmon cheddar crust. It does sound really cool. I've got something simpler in mind. Here's everything you need to pan fry whitefish, and it's a really easy technique. You know, as a, as a chef though, I'm constantly amazed at by how we crave complexity, how we dream up these elaborate presentations in our kitchens and overlook the super simple stuff and somehow think that it's not valid. I mean, all we're gonna do here is just dust some fish, white fish, in some flour, maybe season the flour a little bit, and then pan fry it with a little bit of butter and some oil. It is very, very simple. It's also incredibly good. There really isn't a better way to cook fish than to pan fry it with a flour dusting. Here's a couple of tips. First of all, use the biggest, heaviest saute pan that you have because a big, heavy saute pan evenly radiates the heat. It doesn't have hot spots that can burn the fish. Secondly, take a few minutes to preheat the pan. Don't start with a cold pan. You want the pan to be hot when the fish lands in it so the fish can immediately start to brown. While your pan preheats, get your flour ready. Now you do have some options when it comes to flour. You can use standard issue, all-purpose white flour. It tastes perfectly fine. It works perfectly well, but it's kind of boring. It's kind of like eating white rice on the corner of Smith & Bland. Why not use whole wheat flour instead? It's got more color. It's got texture. It looks better, and it's better for you, and it tastes better, too. Whole wheat flour. One cup of flour is plenty of flour to coat two nice big fillets of haddock. Now, you can also add lots more flavor to this flour than just whole wheat flavor. You have lots of options on your spice shelf. Any one of these herbs, for instance, sage, lemongrass, dill in particular, good choice, tarragon, very nice, thyme, rosemary, whatever you're into. Curry powders are nice, but you know, the one spice that I come back to more often than not when I'm frying fish is actually a blend of spices. Old Bay, this is the good stuff. This is, this is from way down south, the Chesapeake Bay region, and it's perfect with fish. A good rule of thumb, no matter what you choose off your spice shelf, is to add about a, a tablespoon or so for every cup of flour. Of course, that's really just a rule of thumb, so feel free to add as much or as little flavor as you like.
This is called dredging, which is really just a fancy way of saying that flour sticks to moist fish. Okay, the fish is ready. Now let's get the pan ready. Now, one of the keys when it comes to pan frying fish is to use as much butter as you can because butter tastes really, really good. But butter also burns easily. So you've got to figure out a way to get the flavor of the butter without burning the butter. That's actually pretty easy. For that, all you need is a splash of oil, cooking oil, any cooking oil, corn, safflower, or sunflower. And then add your butter, and you'll get the best of both worlds. You'll get all the flavor of the butter, but the oil will keep the butter from burning as quickly. This works really well. This is also a good way to know when the pan is ready for the fish, because as soon as you see that butter start to brown, it's time to carry on, quickly. Now here's another reason to preheat your pan because, well, fish doesn't stick to hot metal. It sticks to cold metal. So by preheating your pan, you're actually helping make the pan non-stick. So how do you know when it's time to flip over the fish? You can look at it, of course. You can just take a little peek and when it's golden brown, flip it over. But you can also listen to it. You'll notice with time and experience, you'll notice clearly that as the fish cooks, the sound of the sizzle increases. It gets more intense. And that tells you that, well, basically the butter's starting to brown, the fish is starting to brown, and it's time to flip the fish. So what do you do when your fish is bigger than your spatula? How do you flip it over without breaking it? You know what I do? I control the break. I cut it first. Now tell me that's not the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in a pan. I get excited just looking at this fish. And I always find myself wondering, why the heck didn't I think to put something that simple on my menu all those years? I'm constantly doing all this fancy, fancy stuff and overlooking simplicity right in front of me. This really is the best possible way to cook whitefish. And did I mention the part about how the whole wheat flour absorbs all the butter in the pan? Yeah, this is the good stuff. How do you know when the fish is actually done? What if you don't have 25 years experience cooking all over the world that allows you to just touch it and say, uh, almost? Well, you do what every chef did the first day on the job. You take a peek. You cut a little, little bit into the side and you take a peek and that looks pretty good. Now, we're not done with the pan yet because all those little brown bits that stick to the bottom, that's a pan sauce waiting to happen. And all you have to do is just add some lemon juice. And you'll know when the sauce is ready because it will look like a sauce. You can always add a little more butter too. I don't think there's any such thing as too much butter. You know what else would be nice here? Would be some of that, that chopped parsley that cooking shows always seem to have hanging around. I mean, isn't that what happens in your kitchen? Everything's already chopped and sliced and diced and waiting in little containers when you get to the kitchen? Actually, this is a cooking show. Perfect. Lemon parsley butter sauce. Oh yeah, it's sweet, it's moist, and it has this beautiful crunchy crust on the outside, and that's the whole wheat flour coming through. The lemon sauce is nice too. This is the single best way to cook fish.